Hi, it's John from Android Alex, and today we're doing another benchmark test for the Galaxy S21 series. So on the left we have the Exynos version, and here on the right we have the Snapdragon 888. So these have both got the May update installed now, so we're going to be comparing those results that we get here to the ones that we had in April. So we can see the system temperature in the top right hand corner of these phones, both at 24 degrees currently. I've taken the SIM cards out of my Exynos variant here just to try and make it a fairer test as possible. So there's not any other heating up going on from other components, but we can see it's already gone up to 26 degrees here. So if you enjoy these videos, please do subscribe because I have got a camera comparison test coming up after the benchmark test here. So we're going to be putting the cameras to the test yet again to see what the camera improvements have been, if any, and just to see whether the Exynos night mode has improved at all since the April update where it was, uh, it was pretty poor to say the least. So I'm just going to skip to the end of the video here and we'll just come back when the results are ready. Okay, so the results are in and let's just have a look at the Exynos first. So we've got a 1096 for the single core and a 3353 for the multi-core. So comparing that to last month's, the single core has increased a tiny bit. We had 1076 last month and the multi-core score has gone down a tiny bit from 3357 down to 3353. So comparing that to the Snapdragon here, we've had an increase of 9 points here on the single core score and quite a big increase here. Now this would make sense because in my speed test that I did, which I've linked down in the description below, you can see that the Snapdragon has had a much bigger boost in performance over the last few months compared to the Exynos. So we're going to run the compute benchmark now and we'll come back when it has finished and we'll just compare those results as well. Okay, so the compute scores are in and this seems to be the one of the only places that the Exynos can ever beat the Snapdragon in here. So we've got a score 7559. Now compared to last month, it has gone up by around just over 300 points here. So last month we had 7228. So that's nice to see that the compute score has gone up that much. The Snapdragon has also had a bit of an increase here by about just under 100 points. So 4648 compared to 4562 last month. So definitely some improvements there, but still there's this huge difference here between the two when it comes to the compute scores. So they've both gone up to 31 degrees as we can see here. So they're both about the same temperature, so I'm going to let them cool down and then we're going to move on to the Antutu test. Okay, so both phones have cooled down sufficiently now, so we're going to go into Antutu. And these are the scores that we had last time, so 711,799 versus 738,427. Now, as people rightly pointed out, this jump in score is actually due to the new version of Antutu here. So the scores have now actually changed somewhat since the previous version, but at least now we can actually compare last month's to this month's new scores with each other. So we're now also running 9.07 on both phones, and we can see here the battery temperature is being read correctly, both widgets here. Now the CPU temperature, I would ignore this on the Exynos. The temperature reading here is completely wrong. It is correct on the Snapdragon, however, because the Snapdragon allows you to read the temperature through, I'm guessing an API or something, this is the correct temperature. But the temperature you see here for the Exynos is incorrect. I can prove this by opening up this third party app here, which just says it can't get the CPU temperature from this device. So it's going to show the temperature by algorithm, which is not accurate. So anyone who says that the temperature being displayed and Antutu for an Exynos is correct. Look at this, 57 degrees, for example. It's completely false. That isn't, you know, you can't suddenly jump from 57 down to 35 degrees. That is just crazy. And now we've gone up to 42. So just ignore these CPU temperatures whenever you see an Exynos phone with Antutu. Anyway, with that being said, let's start the test and see how these two get on now.
Okay, so some pretty impressive results there from both phones, and we'll just start off with the Exynos, as it's on the left here. So last month we managed a high score of 711,799, and we've now gone up to 735,960. It's a similar story on the Snapdragon as well. We had a score of 741,636, and we've now gone up to 752,830. So it's a huge improvement for both phones, as you can see. Now if we have a look at the temperatures for both, we can see that the Snapdragon is still getting warmer than the Exynos, as you can see 10 versus 13, but overall performance wise it doesn't seem to affect the Snapdragon anyway, so it's not really much of a problem. So the main results here that are going to be interesting to you are the CPU and GPU. So the CPU is about 5000 points less on the Exynos compared to the Snapdragon, whereas funnily enough the GPU on the Exynos is actually scoring higher than the GPU on the Snapdragon. So we can see here the scores. So the refinery score was worse by quite a long way. We have 99,000 there compared to 115,000. But the Terracotta Vulcan was well over 100,000 compared to 74,000. So that's a huge difference there between the two. Swordsman, we've gone from 76 to 83. So obviously overall much better on the Snapdragon except for that one Vulcan terracotta test there. Okay, I just thought I'd show you the rankings before we head on to the stress test. So here on the Exynos we've come in at number 10 and on the Snapdragon number 9. Okay, so these are our previous stress test results. So we saw this throttling on the Exynos after about, uh, what's that, about 8-9 minutes, whereas the Snapdragon was absolutely fine and didn't uh, throttle at all. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how these two do with the May update installed. So I'm going to skip to the end of this because this is very boring, nothing to look at, and we'll come back when the results are in. Okay, so the tests have just finished and the results are actually quite interesting here. So whereas before we could see on the Exynos some severe throttling at the sort of seven or eight, nine minute mark, it does seem to be less obvious this time around. So if we just have a look at the previous, we can compare these, I'll put them on the screen. We can see that quite clearly some of the calls were going, you know, as low as, you know, about one point. 3, 1.4 gigahertz, and the rest of them then went below around sort of 1.8 gigahertz. But now, since this update, they seem to all just be sticking around the 2 gigahertz mark. Now, that's still quite bad. We don't want to see that at all. We want to be higher up, you know, to the 3 gigahertz as we can see in the Snapdragon. But it is interesting to see that these things have actually changed somewhat. So, again, looking at the Snapdragon, it's almost a mirror image of the previous month. There's a very slight dip on the sort of 11 minute mark, but I'm not really too worried about that because it goes straight back up again afterwards. But yeah, Snapdragon looks absolutely fine still. Temperature wise, they both got up to 40 degrees Celsius. And we can see if we look at the CPU performance as well, that the Exynos is looking a lot happier than it was last time we did the test. So we're seeing the performance sticking around the sort of maybe an average of around 65-70%. We can also see a nice increase there on the Snapdragon, so even towards the end of the test when it was quite warm, it still goes well above 60 and even poking up into the sort of 100% performance even at the end of the test, which it didn't do last month, so that's really nice to see. So that's very interesting results there. Obviously, mainly the Exynos is the thing that we're going to be worried about here because we know the Snapdragon is absolutely fine in these tests. Okay, so I've now got the Exynos in the active cooler, so I'm going to power it up, we're going to get the temperature down as low as we can, and then we are going to rerun this stress test and just see how it gets on. Right, okay, so as you can probably hear, we have the active cooler plugged in and working quite nicely here, so we're actually down to 17 degrees on the Exynos, so I'm just going to run through the stress test again and we'll just see how it gets on. Okay, so the results are in and I'll just put them up on the screen, so here we can see again the CPU cores clocks with the cooler off and comparing it to when the cooler is on there is a slight difference I think it does seem to peak a bit more above that 2 gigahertz line than with it off but really it's still it is definitely just being held back quite a lot uh, by the throttling of the CPU we do at least get to see the 3 gigahertz line finally on the Exynos um, but it yeah it doesn't really stick around there for too long before it heads back down to the two gigahertz area. So I just wanted to include that in just to see 
whether it made much difference at all. And we'll move on now to the 3D Mark tests and just see how they compare there as well. Okay then, we're ready to start the wildlife test here. So this has actually had an update since the last month's test, so I've just downloaded that and installed it. Just the wildlife test itself has been updated, so let's see how they get on and see what the results are when they finished. Right, okay, so some great improvements on both phones here. So last month we managed just 5834. We've now gone up to 5908 on the Exynos. And on the Snapdragon, we got 5752. We've now gone up to 5833. So that is a nice improvement there. So we just had basically a slightly higher average frame rate on the Exynos, but it's going to be barely noticeable, to be honest. Okay, we're going to do the slingshot test again and just see how those compare as well. Okay, so these scores are looking better, specifically for the Snapdragon here, which wasn't maxing out last month. We got a score of 6974, I believe, which was pretty poor. But now it has finally maxed out. We, we know that it's been optimised quite well this month. The Exynos has been maxed out pretty much since, I think it was the March update. So let's just compare the two scores here. So graphics test 1, 76 versus 78, graphics test 2. 52 versus 35. So that's quite a big difference. There always seems to be that big difference in the graphics test two here. So the physics score, 73 versus 85, 42 versus 50, and then 24 versus 26. So overall, the Snapdragon is still beating the Exynos, I'd say, in that department. If we have a look at the frame rate though, the Exynos seems to be a bit better in the 3D Mark test. So we can see that the frame rate was from 22 to 118, where the maximum frame rate on the Snapdragon was just 98, with a minimum of 25. So that's quite an interesting uh, comparison there. So yeah, it's nice to see the Snapdragon now maxing out as well on the Slingshot score. So there we have it, that is the May update. So overall, things have improved, which is good. Not by huge amounts, but you, there's only so much you can do, I guess, with updates. But it is good to see that both phones have improved overall throughout all of the benchmarks. So nothing has gone down this time, which is nice to see. And the throttling that we saw on the Exynos in last month seems to have been eased off slightly. We certainly didn't see anything quite as low as we did in the April update, which is nice to see. So I think the, the team, the throttle team at Samsung have obviously heard my words from the last video and decided maybe not to throttle it quite so much. But it would be nice to see the Exynos 2100 getting pushed a bit harder because I think it can do as long as the game or the application is optimized well enough I think it can actually do quite well overall but the Snapdragon you can't ever lose with Snapdragon because it just sits there and it just runs at its peak whenever it can and it does it even whilst getting quite warm it does still perform at its best. So I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please click the like button and be sure to subscribe because the next video we're doing is going to be the camera comparison test. So it'll be quite interesting to see how well the Exynos does, specifically during the night mode, because that's where it fell over in last month's test. So let me know your comments and thoughts down below, and if there's any other tests you want me to try out with these two phones, let me know, and I'll add it to the list. If you want to become a member of the channel, you can click on the join button, that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.